Let's get into some notation here, guys. All of these things here in the green mean the exact same thing. In calculus, uh, it's like they try to confuse you by giving you too many ways of doing the same thing. This is said as f prime of x. These all mean the derivative of the function uh, with respect to x. This means dy dx. Technically, it means the derivative of y with respect to x. Don't worry about the idea that it looks like a fraction. There's no division or anything going on at this point. We'll talk about that later. But right now, we just say dy dx, and it means the same thing as f prime of x or y prime. These three are the most common. The next most common that we see is this thing here. This means the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Uh, this means also the derivative of f of x with respect to x. This is the same thing. We don't see this one nearly as often. Uh, as we do these first four, okay? Uh, when, a little vocab as we move forward. This first word, differentiation, it means the process of finding the derivative. So if you differentiate a function, it means get the derivative of it, get the slope of the tangent line at a point, okay? Uh, we say that a function is differentiable if its derivative exists, and we say that a function is differentiable on an open interval if it is differentiable at every point in that interval. So we'll talk about where functions are or are not differentiable. Theorem 2.1 tells us that differentiability implies continuity. In other words, more formally in the black here, if f is differentiable at x equals c, then f is continuous at x equals c. It does not necessarily go the other way around. Uh, if we have continuity, then that, uh, doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean we have differentiability. Some examples might be here. If you have a function that goes here and then comes to a sharp turn, like a cusp is what we'd say, imagine a piecewise, this area right here is continuous. I didn't have to pick up my pencil to, to, to uh, stop drawing that, but, uh, or in order to draw that, but it doesn't have differentiability because the, uh, it, it's not a smooth curve. And if I ask you, what is the slope of, the, of this curve at this point, you could do that. If I ask you, slope, well, what's the slope of the tangent line at this point, you could do that. But what's the slope of the tangent line at this point? Well, there is no tangent line. Does it go that way or does it go this way? And since we don't know anything on a sharp turn, then we'll get more to that later. And that's that, okay? Um, so, let's see here. As for uh, this next part, um, in the green here, we say if the limit of f of, of, f of c plus uh, delta x minus f of c for delta x approaching 0 equals, I'm sorry, over delta x is uh, infinity or negative infinity, and you could have put x up here for the c's. It's the, basically, if this is saying if the derivative is infinity or negative infinity, think of what that would look like. If you have a slope that's approaching, uh, you know, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, as you get closer and closer to a value, that must be happening as the uh, line is going, as the curve is basically going straight up. That happens at a vertical tangent, okay? Uh, at a uh, horizontal asymptote. So we say, um, if that's true, then uh, that could happen other places, like for example, at uh, the curve uh, f of x equals the cube root of x squared. We know what that looks like right there at zero. There's a vertical uh, tangent line there as well. So at a vertical tangent line, this could be a quiz question or test question, um, the derivative does not exist. Okay. Uh, here we go. Uh, so, so far we have differentiability not occurring at anywhere where we don't have continuity or at a vertical tangent line. Moving on. Get your uh, calculator out for a second. You might want to hit pause here. So now, uh, go ahead in your math menu and hit number choice 8, and you'll see this thing called n derivative. That means the numerical derivative. You want to type it in after you get the parentheses here of function comma x comma the number. So, for example, if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line at x squared, or of x, the curve uh, x squared at x equals 1, I would have to type math 8 and uh, hit enter, and then I, when I get this n derivative and a parentheses, I would type in x squared, that's the function, then comma, uh, which is, uh, I believe, above the 7, I, I'm not positive on that, but uh, it's up there, and then uh, comma x, you're here in this part, you're, you're telling your calculator what you want your uh, calculator to differentiate with respect to, we differentiate with respect to x at this point, so then comma, and then the number that you want to see what point, what x value do we want it to find the slope of the tangent line at, so then when you do that, it'll, uh, if you hit enter, it'll tell you, uh, should give you the answer is 2. Okay, uh, so we'll come back to that later. Guys, when you're doing this process that we talked about yesterday where you take the limit of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x like we did in uh, the first day of this, and you get an expression in x, something like 2x or 
3x squared. And then you take your, your uh, from there, you can take an x value, plug it in, and you get the slope of the tangent line at that point. Well, if you don't want to care about the slope of the tangent line at every point, you don't want an expression in x, but you really just want to go directly to the uh, slope of the derivative at a single number, then you, you can use this alternate, alternate form of the definition of the derivative. Again, it says, use when you want a numerical value of the derivative at a specific point rather than an expression in x. When you do the original form of the definition of the derivative, this whole thing, you get an expression like 2x, and that tells you the value of the slope of the, of the uh, tangent line at all points, no matter what the x coordinate is. If we want to go directly to a single point, then you can say f prime of c is the limit of the x approach of c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. This will be in x, this will be in c, and these will be numbers, so we'll come back to those later. Uh, in example one here, this says, find the equation of the tangent line at a point given. So, if we have f of x equals x cubed at the point 2 comma 8, the first thing we want to do is use our definition of the derivative, f prime of x equals uh, over here. But then at this point, I could do the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, let me backtrack here. I could do this problem here and go straight to it. We're going to look at it in several ways. So this one, I'm going to use the other method. I'm going to get the expression in x, and then I'm going to plug in the value. So here we go. Here's the definition of the derivative originally. I'm going to do f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x when we expand this cube. Please Please memorize the expansion of that uh, binomial cubed. It's this part right here up to there. Make sure we put a delta x in parentheses here. So when we cancel out the x cubes, we get this look, and then we can cancel out all of these to have a delta x remaining in it. So they cancel out. We're left with this. Now we do direct substitution. This becomes zero. This becomes zero. So this tells us that the derivative, the slope of the tangent line for any point on the Q on the uh, curve y equals x cubed can be given by taking the x coordinate, squaring it, and then multiplying it by 3. Okay? We know that the point 2, comma 8 is on that curve. That curve looks like it goes up here and then back up there. If we go up here to the point 2, 8, there's a tangent line, and now we can just do if f prime of x equals 3x squared, then f prime of 2 equals, put a 2 here, a 2 there, square it and multiply it by 3, and you get 3 times 2 squared, which is then 12. So this tells us that, therefore, the slope of the tangent line at the point 2, 8 is 12. Okay? Uh, so if we wanted to get the equation of the tangent line, well, what's the equation of any line? What do we need? We need a slope and we need a point. All this work here gave us the slope. That's the slope. That's the point. So now we can go into point-slope form, write it like that. That's the best way. But if you need to graph it on your grapher, you can solve for y and you get this guy here. Okay? So now let's go back and try our end derivative. And if at any point during this video you need to hit pause and do your own examples, that's probably a good idea. So now try end derivative, type in x cubed, x comma 2, and what does it give you? Does it give you exactly 12? No. Okay, no, it gives you 12.00000001, and you have to be smarter than your calculator. I know it doesn't seem like that sometimes, but you are infinitely more intelligent than your calculator. It's going to give you this. You have to interpret that as 12. So on a test, if you do this, and it says 12.00000001, don't write that. The answer is 12, okay? If you were to graph on your, uh, graph, uh, on your y equals field, 12x minus 16, uh, and go ahead and do that on your grapher. I'll give you a second. You might want to hit pause. Then go to your calculate, calculate menu and choose dy dx, and it'll ask you what point you want to calculate the derivative at, and it, go ahead and type in 2 and hit enter, and it'll give you this same value. And so there's two different ways on your calculator that you can find the derivative at a point. You can either do it with n derivative by typing it in, or if you're on your graph, then you can calculate dy dx and interpret that as 12. Okay, so we note that a function is not differentiable at a cusp. That's the uh, diagram I showed you earlier. In other words, what would the slope be? Well, it would be two different things from, the, from different sides, so we don't have that. So we don't have differentiability at a cusp or a vertical tangent line. Uh, the slope would be undefined, okay? Some homework hints for number 24, if we do that one. Uh, use number 16. These are related. Don't redo the problem for 24. And for 49, use the alternate form of the definition of the derivative. So if you go to section 2.1 and do number 27 through 30 orally, just to get a check on how we're doing here, take a look at number 27 and, and uh, through 30 and do the matching on this with me. Go ahead and open up your book. Hit pause if you need to. Okay. Now this is asking for number 27, the f of x equals x, which of these a through f, which of these functions has, a, which of these, um, it says use your knowledge of the graph of the function, uh, 
and the geometric interpretation of the derivative to match the function with the graph of its derivative. Well, what's the slope of the, of the line y equals x? It's 1. So which of these graphs, a through f, has a, has a, uh, says that at any x value, the, the, uh, w that the derivative f of x is 1? Which of these has, is the graph of the derivative? It's 1 everywhere. Well, it's got to be b. Okay? For uh, 28. Uh, f of x equals x squared. We did that one. Okay, what is the derivative of f of x equals x squared? We did that one in our warm-up yesterday. f prime equals 2x. So which of these is the graph of f equals 2x? Okay, e is the derivative, is the graph of the derivative of number 28, and you get the idea, okay? So that's uh, that part. We're going to squeeze this next part in here. Um, to examine derivatives from the left and right, we need to consider differentiability and continuity of piecewise functions. This symbol here means that f prime from the left means the derivative from the left. What slope are we coming in at from the left side? This symbol here means the derivative from the right. So they're asking in example one, is f of x differentiable? Well, a couple things need to happen. First of all, we have to have continuity. Okay, You can't have in this, you can't have... You can't have two piecewise functions or two piecewise parts coming in at the different levels there and here. And even if they have the same slope coming this way and this way, they don't touch, so this would not be continuous. Therefore, it's not differentiable. Okay. Um, this part here, we note that f prime of x is going to be different for this expression than it is for this expression. We already did the derivative of this expression. We found that uh, in our warm-up yesterday that the derivative is uh, 2x. And so that's going to be the expression for the derivative for x less than 1. Uh, what's the slope of this line right here? The slope of this line is negative 1, anywhere where x is to the right of 1. So this is f prime of x is also piecewise defined. And so we do have different slopes coming in from the left and right. So a couple different possibilities here. We said in this piecewise look, we could have two different things coming in at different levels where this limit, this y value is different than this limit. If that's the case, we don't have continuity, so we could not have differentiability as well. There's another case also here. What if we had a graph that had two functions come into this at the same height, but maybe at different, at different slopes? Okay. Here we have a cusp. The slope of this tangent line, if I were to draw in maybe red right here, coming in from the left, this slope is a positive value, and this slope is a different value. The derivative from the left would be whatever this slope is, looks like about positive 3. The derivative from the right would be about what this slope is, about negative 2, and those aren't the same right there. So, uh, so those would be another possibility here. Okay. We also have a third possibility, and this is what we want. In order for us to achieve differentiability on a piecewise function, we have to have we have to have at this value right here, we have to have not only do they come in at the same height so that they touch each other unlike this graph, but they come in at the same angle like this graph here. So or unlike this graph here. So we want, for example, suppose we had a parabola that, that had a downward slope to right there, and maybe another line that went just like this, so this would make a single smooth, smooth curve, so that if I were to give the tangent line from the left, it has that slope, and the tangent line from the right has the same slope right there. So that's kind of the idea of what we're looking at here uh, analytically. So first we want to find out what is the limit from the left and the limit from the right. So to do that, let's go back to last chapter to talk about uh, continuity first. This part right here, we first have to determine, do we have continuity? So we take this boundary point, plug it in there. What do we get from the left? We get 1 squared, or just 1. If we take this and plug it in there, we get negative 1 plus 2, which again is 1. And so since these are equal, and since these values are, these are equal, therefore f is continuous at x equals 1. So uh, that tells us that we do not have something that looks like this guy right here, but instead these the graphs actually touch each other. Now we got to determine do they come in at the same angle like this, or do they come in at the same angle like that. So, if I were to bring this back up here, now let's look at the derivative from the left. That's this expression here. So now I want to take this boundary point and plug it into the derivative from the left. I'm going to get 2 times 1 
or just two. Or if I get the derivative from the right, the derivative from the right, no matter what, on the right side is a slope of negative one, so uh, I can't plug anything in anywhere. I just get negative one. Do these come in at the same angle? No. The slope here is two. Coming out like this, the slope from the right is one. All right. And so since these are not equal, we do have them touching each other, but we do not have differentiability. We would get a graph that kind of looks like this guy right here, where they touch each other, but they don't come in at the same angle. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at one more example here. This one here says, is f of x, uh, uh, given by this piecewise function, is it differentiable? Note that f prime of x is 2x for x less than 1 and 2 for x greater than 1. Okay, the derivative here we know is x is 2x here, the slope is 2. So let's first look at, uh, we're going to look at this in the reverse order. Do we have the derivative from the right equaling the derivative from the left? In other words, is the slope of the tangent line from the left the same as the slope of the tangent line from the right? So we take, we're going to go to this part here, not this part. We're going to go to this part, the derivative, and plug in the boundary point. Obviously, we get 2 for both of those. Okay. And so this tells me that I am coming in at the same angle. As, the, as x approaches 1 from the left, the slope of that curve is going to be 2. As x approaches 1 from the right, the slope of that curve is going to be 2. So since those are equal, the most we can say right now, we, be careful, we can't say it's differentiable yet. The most we can say about this is that the left side and the right side approach x equals 1 at the same slope. So now we got to determine which one of these do we have. We know it's not this one. These come in at a different angle. Now do we have this, where they come in from the left at a slope of 2, and we come in from the right at the slope of 2, but they don't even touch each other? That's what we have so far. We don't know if it's the they actually touch each other. Or do we have them coming in at the same height, uh, I'm sorry, the same slope from the left and right, but they do actually touch each other. We know they're the same slope from the left and right, but we don't know if we have them even touching each other. So now we've got to test for continuity. So we're going to go back to the original function, plug 1 in there, plug 1 in there, and do we get the same thing? Well, if we plug 1 in here, we're going to get 1. If we plug 1 in here, we're going to get 3. So since those are not equal, we can say even though they were coming in at the same angle, we don't even have continuity. So basically it would look like the graph that we saw first, this thing right here. Okay. So we don't have continuity he uh, here, so we can't have differentiability. If a graph looked like this, we would have continuity but not differentiability. Mm -hmm. We need for the limit to be equal and the slope from the left and the right to be equal. So a third example would look like this. Uh, is this function differentiable at the boundary point 1? Well, what's the derivative of this 2x? What's the derivative of this 2? So if I were to take a look at the f prime of x piecewise defined, that's going to be 2x anywhere to the left and 2 to the right. Now let's look at uh, the, uh, this gives me continuity. When you're checking limits, you're checking for continuity. Do they actually touch each other? This part here, when you take in 1 and plug it into the expression from the left, you're, you're checking the height right there. So that is a value of 1 squared or 1. Take this one, plug it in here, and I'm going to get 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. Since these are the same, those are in fact equal. Therefore, we do have continuity. So what that would look like is we know we either have this where they come in at the same angle or this where they come in at different angles, but we don't have this. We do have continuity, so these would actually touch each other, right? So then over here, let's check for the derivative from the left and right. Take Now check this expression. Take 1, plug it in there. Take 1, plug it in there. Both of them are equal to 2, so that tells us that since they are equal, we do have them coming in at the same slope. Since they're at the same slope and they touch each other, we do have differentiability. So uh, your assignment for this is uh, the combination of what I gave you in class for this one and 